followed them with my ears till they came into the bedroom and it hit the sitting in the corner playing with dolls. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Psychic Point of View. I'm Michael Lamport, the uh, producer of the psychic series Rescue Mediums, and I'm one of your hosts. And uh, the other host of the show is the incredible, wonderful Jackie Dennison. Well, he's told you who I am, so you know who I who I am. I'm uh, the host of uh, Rescue Mediums and the co-host of this show, and we are delighted today to have with us uh, Lisa Snarpet, who is um, not only psychic and a wonderful healer, but she's also an author. Um, and so, this is your first we're going to talk about today isn't it lisa um a star star seed odyssey is that right that's right that's correct yes fantastic okay well, welcome to the show um Thank you. how did how Thank did this book originate um so back in 2017 um i suffered three cardiac arrests one out of hospital and two in hospital when I was being resuscitated and treated. Hmm. So I was in a coma and um, lots of strange things were going on, happening to me, near-death experiences. Um, and when I come round and I was awake and I had all these strange memories, um, I was seeing colours, I was seeing shapes, and I realised that I was picking things up in the coma. People thought, you know, I was just asleep, that was it. But I realised I was actually processing information, not correctly, but it was there. And I was released from hospital. I came back um, to Plymouth in Devon, where I live. I was actually mm. in hospital in St. George's in London. And mm. I had a lot going around my head. I had a lot of information I couldn't make sense of. Mm. And I was unable to read. It's always been my favourite pastime to read books ever since I was really young. I was reading classics that when I should have been out to play, I was in reading. And I was like, oh, really disappointed I couldn't take in information because of the oh, hypoxic gosh. it was the hypoxic brain injury where I'd been starved of oxygen oh wow. now wait I'm sorry to interrupt you Lisa, but when you were in the coma for example mm -hmm. and do you remember the dreams or is it correct to call them dreams if you're in a coma or the experience yeah in your head I remember and when I was fast asleep, as far as I was concerned, I was flying around the universe with a boy dressed in purple. Huh. So, yeah, so, and when Maybe I woke up, yeah, yeah, I was just, I don't know who this boy was, but I was literally flying around the universe with him. And so knowing that I had problems with words, reading, retaining information um i wanted to improve my mind my brain and my doctor said to me he said you have two years to improve the pathways that have been destroyed in your brain oh. he said actually he said you can create new ones oh. so i started to write and i wrote a story and i started writing things that had happened in this story about a girl based it was based on me as I was younger but this girl was going on adventures she had a secret heart condition that she wasn't aware of just mm. like me and she was ill in hospital she was in a coma um but she wasn't a normal girl she was a girl who had lived before and she came to earth to help she didn't fit in 
she wasn't the same as all the people around her. Um, but while she's in this coma, she goes on this adventure of the realms. She flies around the universe. She so it sounds people. very. It sounds almost autobiographical. It is. <laughs> it's it's been um written as being a fantasy. It's a part of the fantasy genre, but I'm like, well, my life must be a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's sounds very like fascinating, but yeah. Some of, so some of the things you've written in, uh, you, that you've written about, will be um, actual memory that you you had during your coma um, yes. and part of your life. But yes. did you find that other things were coming to you as you were writing that either you didn't remember? Uh, or there was just a sudden recall of something. Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, there's there's the haunted house. The haunted house is all about the holiday I went on, and um, being how I am, my my children don't really stand a chance, and uh -huh. my poor daughter was at primary, you know, primary school age, and she come down absolutely petrified telling me that there was a faceless woman in the bedroom um, and then the wardrobe doors started banging and opening and um, it got a bit hairy there. Um, <laughs> so a lot of my life experiences are in the book. Right. Now, when you do you look back on the time that you were in the coma and if you do what do you experience now that you're not in a coma so every single day i think about what happens and mm. every single day i puzzle over the fact that i was traveling up that white light i think right. about that experience every what? single day that does it scare you does it, sc does it scare you no I just wonder why they didn't want to let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because you needed like, to write that back, book. Go back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's like the bouncer in a club. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They weren't quite ready. Nah, you, you can't quite come in right now. <laughs> yeah, they weren't ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so obviously you had work to do. I did. Yeah, definitely. Because my book is, um, you know, it incorporates my psychic abilities. Um, it's a book to say to, you, you know, younger people, age 12 plus. But it's to say to them, okay, so you might not be the same as the other people because you have these abilities. But, mm. you know, don't hide away from it because that's what I did. I do, you, do, you, do you talk to your kid, do you, 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 your, your daughter, about this sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's all it's perfectly normal now in my in my house. Yeah. My daughter, she has her own flats, and she'll phone me and she'll be like, "Why is there writing appearing on my mirror?" <laughs> oh my <God>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yes. Do you still so, have um, experiences uh, like you had when you were in the coma? Do you still have those experiences through dream state or meditation? Absolutely. Um, all the time, I'm constantly through my waking day. I constantly get to moments throughout the day when I'm, I'm aware that I've seen this before, that I knew that this was going to happen. And I know that means I'm on my right path. So is, that like a, is that like a deja vu, uh, vu sort of thing? I I call it precognition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to the point where I actually write everything I dream that I can remember down. Because Ooh. I've just, because I dream so much and I astral travel and I come out of my body. I'm very busy at night. I wake up exhausted most mornings. <laughs> Well, were you uh, like that as a child? Were you psychic as a child, do you think? 
yeah definitely um mm-hmm. I remember being petrified of going to sleep um going to bed because I used to like wake up and there'd be people stood around me um I remember one night literally it's in my book um this girl she she doesn't know why she's waking up in the middle of the night and she sees a a man stood with a child in mm. her bedroom and she literally pulls the quilt over her head she's yeah. afraid to go to the toilet because she's like she doesn't know who these people are what they want with her um so everything that happens to this girl it's what's happened to me throughout the years and I'm, come to the end she knows I'm, who I'm, she I'm, is i'm i'm sorry so do you think that uh dreams that manifest things like that like mm. the people standing around the bed do you think it comes just out of here or do you think it could be real so i i don't believe there is anything that really exists in time time does not exist it's a man made concept Mm-hmm. I'm a Reiki therapist. I work with energy. I know how powerful energy is. Right. Um. So I believe with time not existing, then it's perfectly normal to be able to see forwards, to be able to see backwards, mm-hmm. and to your energy to be able to move and to be yeah. able to read that energy that's around. Yeah, Ooh, I definitely. totally agree with that. Yeah, understanding the energy, yeah, and how it works, and in order yeah. to do that, of course, you've got to understand your own energy first, so you can measure your yeah. own energy with whatever you you know energy you're connecting, whether whether that's someone who is physically here on the earth plane, or whether someone yeah. who's in a different dimension. Absolutely, and that's yeah. why it was so difficult for me because. I came from gypsy ancestors, but uh, I hadn't known that. And I wasn't oh, around my family. And so I was like a complete fish out of water. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was very hard when I was younger to be able to understand, to make sense and to make it logical because it wasn't. So, But, but coming from gypsy ancestors... Did they mm-hmm. talk to you about their uh, beliefs, their their beliefs in, in in what the world and everything is about? Sadly not, because it wasn't until after I cardiac arrested and I needed to find out about my genetics. Wow. Um, up, in, up until that point, my biological father didn't know that I'd actually been born. Oh. Um, and mm. my biological father was, the only one out of his um father's children who was left to grow up in a normal house as the youngest um my grandmother died and so my grandfather having a newborn baby and a Mm -hmm. caravan full of other children he had to leave the young baby behind so my father didn't grow up with his family Right. And his culture. And he didn't know that he had another daughter born, which was me. And so, yeah, I was totally out on a limb. I was picking all this information up, reading all this energy, and I didn't have a clue why. Yeah. But the the cardiac arrest actually resulted in me um, being introduced to my biological father mm. and now I'm in contact with him and I have three other half siblings that's amazing um, and, you're in, and you're in contact with them too I am yes um my biological dad and my mum they're both undergoing genetic tests mm. because June this year I discovered I have a genetic abnormality which is very likely what made me have cardiac arrest Right. Okay. So, so yeah. much information is is kind of like come out these last few years from this major medical episode. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and uh, that puts a whole different perspective on things, doesn't it? You know, it's like you've needed to find your soul path, um, but you've also needed to find that genetic oh, <laughs> that genetic connection um, yeah. as well uh, yeah. with uh, through yeah. DNA. Um, yeah. But that, that is in order to save lives as well, not just your life, but to save, yeah. to save family members' uh, lives and to understand how yeah. uh, this could be. So it can be uh, prevent, you're preventing yeah. others, yeah. you know, from having to go through the same thing. And my novel is also very much, it follows that theme of prevention. It, mm. um, there's, it mentions and descriptions of CPR because I want people to if they've read my book, if they're ever in the position that they have to try and help somebody who needs CPR, then, the then they'll just they'll just do it. What, Even what, children, it, children can save lives. I, I, yes. I agree with you. Uh, can you tell me what the the uh, the the star seed like? Why did you call it star seed? So it's called Starseed because I've got a holistic therapy business and mm. it's my therapy business is Starseed Holistic Therapies. I see. Okay. And Starseed, I'm very much aware that my character is a reincarnated energy mm. and she comes to earth to come down and help raise um, the vibration of the planet. She comes to help, but she gets here. She has that veil of forgetfulness. She's struggling because she's not quite the same as a, everyone mm -hmm. else around, and they think she's different. Um, but she's got a mission plan in her like DNA or blueprint, and but she doesn't know, and it has to decode for her to remember why she's here, what she's come to do. Do you yeah. do you believe that uh, that a lot of us are reincarnated souls? I believe in reincarnation. Um, as a past life regressionist, I've had some amazing experience um, when clients have literally given names of buildings in America, and we're in the UK, and they've given me descriptions of what's being grown on a plantation. And they've given me names and I've been able to research the name of the building that they're telling me and find, yes, this was an actual plantation in America. And I've been able to check the list of crops they were growing there. Wow. So I believe there are new energies. I think there's a lot of old energy living on this planet. Um. I've been told that I'm a very old soul, and I agree, I probably am. I would totally agree with that, looking at your <laughs> energy, looking at, because I love looking at people's auras. And you are definitely an old soul. You have been here many times before. And I, I really, because I'm a past life regression therapist as well, so I totally understand how that uh, how that energy works in that way and yeah. understanding where we've come from to where we where we are now. Um, yeah. I love the star seed um, idea um, of it because we're planting a seed for the future and we yes, come we from are. the universe, from the stars, you know. So yeah. we're using that universal energy to lift the vibrations of the earth because look at what's happening right now with the earth, you know. Uh, yeah. And so if, and if, if we can all raise it in some way, you know, yeah. uh, that that in whichever way. Uh, we can, then that's got to help, hasn't it, through that healing Absolutely. energy. Yeah. And I, you know, if I haven't come from another planet in the galaxy, some people tell me that they know that they've come from a particular yeah. planet. Um, But I believe I'm just, if I, you know, haven't done that, I'm from the universe because I don't believe that energy is permanently destroyed. The human oh. body, any body, um, it can die, animals' bodies, they die. Yeah. But from my near-death experience, I believe that energy just moves on. It goes back into the universe. And I believe that it can come back. 
I, I completely yeah. agree with you in that theory because I have always believed uh, I, I'm a lapsed Catholic. Uh -huh. uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe in heaven and I don't believe right. in hell, but I no. do believe that our energy, because once the energy leaves our body, because mm -hmm. this is just, stuff that we live in <laughs> yeah it does go somewhere yeah. and uh, that energy is out there and i think you're absolutely right and that energy then maybe collides with other energies yes and creates new things or or whatever it is hmm. absolutely it, it, yeah. it doesn't deteriorate no it just changes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Which is what happens anyway. If you get two people, so one, just as an example, you get one person who has acted a particular way all of their lives. They meet someone else, and and then all of a sudden the energy changes because they've met that person. You know, so Absolutely, and that yeah. that is something you can physically uh, be aware of. So it, that has to go in, go on. That has to continue in some way. Yeah, so, you're, you're absolutely right because also. Like, we, I think all of us and everybody watching will know that sometimes when you meet someone, the energy is like, oh, not, it goes cold. I want to be around that person. Or yeah, I really want to be around that person. Like, yeah, definitely. Don't you think so? Yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. When I see a black aura, I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so you are uh, you are um, also a Reiki healer, aren't you? And uh, do you yeah, teach? Yeah. Do you teach Reiki? Um, I do. All? Yes, I teach Reiki. Um, I am a experienced Reiki master. I have a, a practice that I run from home. Mm. Yeah. And what kind of other therapies do you offer? So I offer hypnotherapy. I do the normal sort of weight loss, stop smoking, anxiety. So I do mm. past life regression. I love that. I, yeah. Um, I'm also a tarot reader. Mm -hmm. So um, I have regular customers coming for tarot readings. And I obviously I do spiritual writing. Um, yes. Before the novel, my articles were published with the supernatural magazine yes. about my my right, day yeah. trips and what I experience and I so, think yeah. that's where I first came across you from those yeah. articles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And that is a great magazine. Yes. I've just written another piece for them uh, telling everyone about the book. Because the book oh, is right. coming out on the thirtieth of September. Right. How can how can they get hold of it? How can we get? Because I'm 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 definitely going to get a copy. Fantastic. So um, the I have made sure that I have all the rights to the book because I just there's so many ways I can work with this book. I'm working with the British Heart Foundation, um, yeah. because we've got this whole concept of heart disease. CPR, so they're backing me. So I'm very much going down that the heart route. Then yeah. I have my spiritual and psychic side. So people can contact me directly yeah. because I'm going to be having a lot of the copies. I'm going to be ordering more as I need it. Um, but I, I intend to make up a shop on probably Etsy. And it is it's going in a few local stores to me in Plymouth. And then as, you know, if it gets some popularity, then I can take it further. Right. Because okay. I just think this is a great concept. And I can't wait to read it. Thank you. I am really proud of it. Um, You know, to where I was when I first yeah. sat down writing that story. Yeah. To what it is now. And the illustrations are absolutely amazing. They were um, created by a lady called Rebecca Mann, who lives in Cornwall, across the water from me. Yeah. And she is um, one half of um, 
owner of a business called the Cornish Witch Company. Huh. And she has done me so proud, the, the illustrations of my characters. Excellent. Really amazing. Yeah, because that's the other thing as well, isn't it? You know, when you bring somebody in to, to illustrate something that you've written, is it quite the concept of how you've seen it? You know, so yeah. obviously you're you're delighted with with what she's done. So she's very much tuned in to your energy yeah. to be able to um, connect with uh, the people in the story. Absolutely, but me and her, we've not known each other for many years, but oh. we came across each other on Facebook. And we started having a discussion and we realised that we were having some of the same dreams. Oh. And so we realised that, you know, we were going somewhere with this. <laughs> we were obviously supposed to cross paths. Where, yeah. where, um, what, what town did you live that. in Cornwall? It's called St. Austell. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because uh, growing up as a kid, I grew up in South End on Sea. Oh, every yeah. year, my parents and I would go to Cornwall for holiday, yeah. and we had stone and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So nice. I, I know Cornwall very, very well, and wow. the the cave where they say King Arthur or Merlin used to live King in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it, it's always been a big thing in my memory because I, I found Cornwall so beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very magical place. Yeah. yeah. As, as is uh, Plymouth, which is where you live. It is indeed, yes. Very yes. nice city with the sea as well. Yeah, gorgeous part of the world. Is there going to yeah. be another book, Lisa? There is. So I am now working on a second book, which mm. is, it's not a fiction. It's a book about um, out-of-body experiences. Oh, cool. It's about my experiences, mm. about me, what I can do, why I think I can do this, how yeah. I explain it to people. Um, so this book is a bit more factual. Mm-hmm. So, so self help, you know, so people can understand, um, yes. you know, what through your experiences, what's happening yes. with them. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I think if something happens to me, it happens to me for a reason. Yes, and then so that's why I write about it and try and help, and hopefully, then you know, a Starseed Odyssey will help people. If somebody can remember that this is what they've got to do if somebody suddenly becomes ill, drops down unexplained. Yeah. Um, but there will be a sequel to A Star Seed Odyssey as well. Yeah. Oh, God. I have to say, because as Jackie knows, like in Rescue Mediums, I'm the one that always makes the bad puns. <laughs> the title of your next book could be it's not a full stop, but it's a coma. It's oh. very <laughs> oh. Cheers, Michael. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh. And on that note, we will wish you all the very, very best with uh, your uh, novel. Um, Thank you. And uh, we will um, put all your details, website details and everything at the end of this show. Um, and you can put that, this is going to go out on veryparanormal.com. It'll be on YouTube uh, as well. Okay. So um, people can uh, find a way of um, getting to you, pre-ordering yeah. this. But I would like to go on that list straight away as a pre-order. Let me know how much and where to pay. And it's a done Thank deal. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. And then, yeah, um, maybe, you know, we can have you on the show again down the line Thanks. to see uh, you know how things are progressing with the book where you're up to um and um yeah see see where you're going with the next book and uh, it's been fantastic fascinating talking to you um ab Thank about you. all of this your energy is amazing you know i love looking at people's Thank energy you. and you've got such a vibrant energy um, yeah it, it's a really powerful energy which is uh, uh it's so good to see people 
uh, like that, you know, when some people's energy is quite sort of wishy-washy. Uh, yeah. A little holes here in there, but yours is, hello, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And I have yeah, a purpose. They, they sent me back. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, thank you, thank Lisa. You. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.